Today I'm teaching you how to make curtains for my office. So stick around. Hi friends, my name is Claire and this is my channel, Woodshed Theory. Here, I make content about what it is like to live as an adult on the autism spectrum and whatever else feels good to me, like sewing. So if that sounds good to you or if you're feeling particularly gracious today, and I hope that you are, please go ahead and click the subscribe button. Ring the bell. <laughs> I am so sick of not having curtains in my office. And when the opportunity came to get enough yardage to make curtains for my house, I thought, what an opportunity to show you how to make all the curtains you'll ever need for your home. Have I ever made my own curtains? Uh, no. But I can, I can sew a straight line, so we should be able to make curtains, right? What I'm waiting on uh, is getting the curtain rods. I ordered them from Amazon yesterday. They should be here by the end of the night. Curtain rods were so much cheaper on Amazon. I went to Target yesterday to look at some. They were, it was $18 for the cheap rod. No way. I got two for less than the price of one at Target. As far as the fabrics I'm gonna be using, this one, these are gonna be the sheer inside. There'll be a thicker curtain on the outside and this will be on the inside. Gosh, it looks so beautiful. I can't find this fabric online anywhere. I remember reading that there was some silk in it um, at the store, but now it's unlabeled. So that will be on the inside. So beautiful, right? And then I've got a big piece of this on a roll and that's going to be the outside. It's like a heavy, there's some linen in it. It's a heavy canvasy fabric with these beautiful silver embellishments on it. This used to be $50 a yard. It's Nate Burkus, which is a, a designer. Will I be able to do it? I know I will, uh, but will I be able to do it well? I don't know. But this is great practice because I got fabric to do a lot of windows in my house. So welcome to my curtain journey. You're going on it with me. Math says that I'm going to need about a little more than two and a half yards in length her curtain. So I think I'm going to have just enough of this. If I piece some things together. You won't see the bottom anyway. So I, I think I have just about enough of this to make that work. And then I definitely have enough of the sheer fabric. I'm just trying to figure out how I'm going to make it happen. So what I think I'm going to do, I just put together these rods that I got off of Amazon. They're actually pretty cool. They're not in one piece. They screw together so you can uh, figure out what size you'd like. Okay, that's one done. And you know what? It's straight enough. You know what? That's not that bad, guys. I've done worse things. Yay! Another step completed in curtain palooza. Back on the curtains. For the sheer part of the curtains, I did a test on the uh, old gal, my 50 or 60 year old um, hem machine. He no, overlocker, sorry. <laughs> um, so what I'm gonna do now is I think I'm going to go around all the edges of this and overlock it. I already did one example just to make sure it was working okay. Could I just fold it over and stitch? Yeah, I'll probably do that. So I'm just going to overlock the top and the bottom um, just because there's going to be more weight on it with the hem and at the top. <laughs> Just made a sample panel. 
of the sheer curtains because that's what I have cut so far. I'm glad that I did it off camera. I learned some things, which I'll show you now. It is so easy to make something like this. Um, all I did was after I did the overlock on the ends, I went back and I just folded over half an inch on each side and stitched it so that it would prevent it from, so that it would prevent uh, it from fraying anymore and the frays wouldn't be sticking out because it's quite a fray kind of fabric. I just sewed a pocket up there and I ended up cutting off the overlocking because I didn't love how it all looked. There's still a little left, but on the rest of them, I'm gonna cut the overlocking off the top. It was just too bulky. So I just sewed a pocket on the top. I folded the fabric over two inches and sewed it. And then at the bottom, I folded the fabric. See, I didn't cut the overlocking over here and it doesn't look as nice as I was hoping. So um, I'm gonna keep it just because it's at the bottom and you're not gonna see it. But I folded it about three, three and a half, maybe four, eh, three and a half inches over and just sewed another pocket as the hem at the bottom. Uh, as you can see, it doesn't cover the entire curtain rod, but that is all right, because I have the opaque curtains that are gonna go at the sides. So as I said, I'm just gonna fold the edges or the sides in by like a half an inch, sew them down. I'm not being too crazy about measuring just because the fabric is super finicky and I'm not gonna try and uh, iron it. I feel like that would be a death wish, so. Hi okay, friends, so I just finished I mean, you can barely see it, but I folded the edges in facing the same side on, on each side and stitched down. So all I'm gonna do now, trim some of this off, um, is show you how do I tell how big I want the pocket to be. It all depends on what size the rod is. So I can see here that if I fold this over two inches, that gives me more than enough space to put the curtain through the rod. It's like a good size. Like if I did one inch, it might be a bit tough to get the curtain in. This will make it easier to move the curtain. So I'm gonna fold it over two inches and just sew a straight line to make a pocket. And then for the bottom, I'm gonna do the same thing but folded up that three and a half ish inch inches and then sew a straight line and that'll be the hem at the bottom. Okay, I just hung it up. It's looking good up there, but look how uneven it is on the bottom. But guys, it's going behind the couch. No one's ever gonna see it. And again, this fabric is super <laughs> hard to work with. So once it's behind the couch, it's gonna look perfectly fine. They are not perfect. What a hard fabric to work with, this sheer fabric. But as I mentioned before, ooh, see how the top's not even there? I guess I could cut it, but you can't really tell, guys. Uh, you're not gonna be able to really see the bottoms. So the sheer part of this project is finished. It sure has been a while, hasn't it? You don't know that. To you, it could be tomorrow, but to me, it's been a few weeks. <laughs> so last time we spoke, I had done the, I'm looking at them right now. You can kind of see them over here. I had done the sheer curtains for my office. And the next step then, I already had them cut out, was to wash the fabric that I got for the heavy part of the curtains on the outside, the more decorative part, I guess. I cut off any frays 
And then um, I kind of got stuck at that point because the one set of panels is, I think everything was supposed to be like 95 inches. One of the panels is gonna be cut in half. So I need to sew that panel together. And I've been dreading doing that for some reason. So I'm gonna start with that today. got the two pieces sewn together. There's the back. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, what's the word? I'm going to go ahead and iron this seam as flat as I can. So I've got it ironed and trimmed to the same size. I did that by just laying one on top of the other so I knew what to trim it to. So I was thinking what to do about how to cut these in half in a way where I'm going to get even sides without having to measure like a crazy person. So what I decided to do is fold them in half and then steam iron the, um, the corn, the fold. Oh my goodness. Steam iron the fold so that I can just cut down that line when it's time to cut the panels. All right, I have cut the two big panels into four smaller panels. And they're not super wide, as I said. So what I'm gonna do now is overlock over every single edge around the rectangles before I start using my sewing machine. I'll use the overlocker. And I feel like this is gonna be a little bit of a disaster because my overlocker can be a little uh, temperamental. She's an old girl, she's 60 years old. so. Wish me luck that I, I don't have to rethread it a million times. I wanted this project to be finished yesterday. Obviously, it is not. I just finished doing the surging interlocking along the sides of all the panels. I quit doing the panels yesterday when I made a huge... I Well, we'll call it an art, our artistic choice instead of a... Uh, what sort I'm looking for? A mistake. A mistake? I'll show it to you now. The machine is still giving me issues, but yesterday in the middle of it getting the issues, there's just like a big piece cut out of the side. I'm gonna roll it into the uh, side hem, but yikes. <laughs> this is what the overlocking looks like, by the way. not super perfect at all hopefully as i do more curtains i become a curtain expert but what i'm learning is curtains seem super easy but there's a lot of fabric to work with so maybe they're not as easy as i thought so hopefully in the future i get i'm just continuing to get better at curtains because right now they're i hope they look nice when they're up but right right now they're looking a little janky so my next step before I do the final, um, like sew the pocket and then sew the hem is to go on each of the sides and I'm going to, with about an inch or a half an inch, fold over and then iron it and pin it so that when it comes to sew it, it'll be all nice and straight. So I'm gonna work on that now. Finished pinning my first section and I did the worst one first, the one where I took a, accidentally took a chunk out of the curtain um, so that after this, everything will be nice and straight and easy. <laughs> um, so yeah, 
what I'm going to do now is just run a straight stitch right down the edge here so that it holds it and then it'll have like a nice edge to it when I hang the curtains. So I'm just finishing the edges up. So I finally got done. I'm finally finished sewing all of these edges up and it's actually not looking that bad from the other side. I was worried that this was going to be a hot mess. Now I think it's just going to be more of a Mm, nobody's got to know it's a hot mess if it looks good. <laughs> so the final step on making these curtains is I need to do a pocket at the top and I need to do a hem at the bottom. So for the pocket at the top, I'm going to roll it over half an inch and iron it, then roll it over like an inch and a half and iron it again. And then I'm going to sew along that bottom line just to make the pocket for the rod. And I think I'm just going to repeat the same thing at the bottom, except I'm going to be taking it up three inches instead of two inches. Now, now that I have everything pressed and I'm pinning, all I have to do is sew along this line right here. Try and make it as close as I can to the line and that will form the pocket that the rod will go in and then on the hem and it'll just be the hem. And then I think we'll be ready to hang them up. Okay, we're finished with the sewing portion. I'm just gonna give these panels one more look over, uh, iron them one more time and make sure that there's no loose threads anywhere and then I'm gonna hang them up but we did it guys we did it question mark <laughs> They're done. I wanted to make sure the shot had the picture of both of them in there. But then if I go up a bit, oh, you could see all my yarn. Nice. <laughs> so yeah, the curtains are done. I have thoughts. Uh, the experience was arduous. Uh, in my head, I thought, because I've sewn other things, right? You've seen it on this channel. In my head, I thought, this is going to be super easy. How hard can it be to sew curtains? But I will say that uh, the sheer curtains were hard because the fabric is very, um, the fabric was very finicky. So that was difficult. The thicker curtains were hard because the fabric, there's so much of it. And I had to sew those two panels together. Um, and then also working with my 60 year old overlocker made it, um, that made it hard as well. So that was not that fun. Would I do it again? Well, I bought a bunch of other material to do other curtains in my house. So we will be doing this again and we will be figuring out how to do it better. And maybe next time, uh, it'll go easier for me. I just hope that it does because this, I don't know. I think it's just that the overlocker part and the amount of fabric and all of the cuts, it made the project a lot less fun than I thought it was going to be. I thought it was just going to be like, let's go. Um, do I like the finished outcome? Other than the seam on the one set of curtains, that's not my favorite. Uh, I think they look okay. I'm like looking over here. You can see them. Um, I think they look okay. I'm not used to them yet. I like the, um, I like the look. I prefer something that's just like straight up, you know, maybe not the shears. 
Uh, but there just wasn't enough fabric for that. And I bought this fabric on like mega clearance. So I'm happy with them in general. As an autistic person, it takes me a long time to get rid of, um, sorry, not get rid of, but get used to new stuff. So this is a change for me. And I'm happy that the experience in this room is over because every time you work on something new, you're able to get better at it. And I have so many other windows to do now with other stuff I bought in my house. I said so many, like several other windows to do, which those projects will be coming up eventually. But I'm glad for now, this room seems to be as finished as it's going to be. Nothing else is gonna fit in here. I have a few hooks and a mirror to hang. But other than that, I think my office is pretty much completo, which is so nice because I've been working on it for a long time. Trying to like make it homey, make it, it's my studio, my office, my sewing studio. And I love, 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 of course, my new yarn storage. So pretty, look, there we get everything in it. Yarn storage, new curtains. I have a carpet in this room, so for me, I'd call this room pretty much almost done. I'm pleased with it. What did you think? Uh, have you made curtains before? What was your experience? I uh, hope that you enjoyed this adventure. I don't know what to call it, but thanks for coming along with me and sewing some curtains with me. I hope we all learned something. Uh, mostly, maybe it might be worth it to buy your curtains. Unless you have a fully functioning, brand new, not brand new, not 60 year old overlocker that's just gonna mess up every every four feet, then you might be able to do better. Uh, that's That's about it though. <laughs> okay guys, bye, have a great day. Let me know what you think.